Here is a GVG 110 panel um, with a number of new labels on there which all represent all the uh, functionality of the panel with all my new software in it. Again it's sitting here and it's controlling an ATM uh, vision mixer. He's got his pants off at the moment because I'm doing a bit of development with it because it's actually using a new board that I've designed back here. You see way down the back here it's a little serial interface board that um, I'll be selling as an option with the Arduino controller. And what it allows you to do is to be able to control two VTR decks using RS422 control. And to achieve that, we have a button here which selects the different transition modes for adjustment. And we select it down so there's none of them selected. And then that then makes the pattern and joystick panel the machine controller or machine controllers and this has the ability to control two machines using the position of button we can then with the light off it's controlling deck one with the light on it's controlling deck two now there are the two decks there that's deck one and that's deck two um, so we go back to just deck one for the moment incidentally deck one on here is a, is a hyperdeck shuttle and deck 2 I'm um, actually using a DVC Pro HD uh, 1200 I think it is Panasonic um, but it can be any any deck with RS422 control um, now this this uses um, the 10 buttons uh, of the white patterns the first five one two three four five they're actually Q buttons for storing Q points um, and the bottom five buttons are the actual deck controllers themselves um, button number nine is play. You can see the little play logo there. Um, that that will play the deck. So if I just come out here and hit play, you'll see it's now playing. Um, and the light will indicate the deck is playing. That light actually is the status of the machine itself. So if somebody walked up the machine and pressed stop, it would stop flashing. Um, the button number six, that's actually um, the jog shuttle button so if I push that there you see the decks come to a still um, and it's um, flashing indicating it's in still um, we have two buttons here which are actually jog forward and jog backwards um, what um, they do is that if you just hit the button once it's actually jogging and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to go to that tape machine full screen there you go and as you can see if I hit the button one frame at a time. It's jogging forward. If I hit the button backwards, it's jogging backwards. Now if you hold your finger on the button for half a second, I'll just do it back here. I'm going to hold it for half a second, take my finger off, it goes into fast forward. And again for rewind, I hold the finger on the button, take it off, and then goes into fast rewind. And any time you can just hit the jog shuttle button and it'll freeze. Now with the jog shuttle button, um, we use the joystick, and in the joystick, in centre position is in still, and as I move it to the left, it's rewinding, shuttling to the left, centre will bring it back to still again, move it off to the right, it shuttles fast forward to the right. Now the reverse button turns it into a jogger. So if I now move it, and I'll just show, show you the time code, gives you an idea where it's going. You'll see that it's actually, that's full over to the right now as I pull it back. It can jog very slowly so you can f very finely, accurately find a frame. Um, and of course going backwards, I can um, jog it backwards very slowly as well. And then in time you can turn it back to a shuttle. And, um, and off it goes. Now... Another little interesting thing that we do here is that over here is my favourite little panel on this panel, and um, and it's a shows you the time code. Um, there's only two lots of digits, and the default mode is we have minutes and seconds. So if I go over and hit play, you'll see the minutes and seconds. Well, look, I've actually changed it. It's in it's in seconds and frames, but I can change it back to minutes and seconds. By doing that, that's minutes and seconds. I hit the button here, 
and that's showing you hours and minutes so you can actually look at all four numbers just by cycling through, through between there and as you can see if I go back to jog mode the time code that's seconds and frames is exactly the same as the seconds and frames coming out of the deck and if you use the jog buttons one frame at a time you'll see it's actually jogging one frame at a time it's going forwards and that's going backwards now there's one button over here I haven't talked about yet which we're going to do now <clears throat> and this is a very play button and what this does is button 10 if you push the button it'll put the machine into very play <coughs> excuse me and the default mode in very play is 50% speed now that speed is actually shown over here so the no longer just shows the time code of the deck but it actually shows you the speed and the speed is controlled again by our friendly little joystick over here but not that way but that way so in the center it's at 50 percent as i pull it down it'll slow the deck down so you can do nice little slows down to freezes oh phone's moving um, and as you can see the speed over here shows at zero and as i slowly move the joystick up oh gotta move the phone there you go um, as I move the joystick up, you'll see that it will increase in speed and it'll never exceed, I'll just cap it off so it won't go over 100% because nothing worse than watching fast motion when you don't want it. So as I take my finger off the joystick, now it's sitting at the default speed and at any time while you're doing, while you're doing a slow-mo, and here I am winding it down, winding it back up again, and that if any time you need to, um, you then want to do a slow-mo, you can pull the joystick down to zero. And then while it's down, you can then just hit the jog button and take your finger off the joystick. And there it is in, in, in um, freeze frame. And it's in shuttle mode. So that any time if you want to do a slight backward track, even while you're on air, sometimes they want to see you go backwards. You can just use the joystick to go backwards and forwards. Um, or in the case of um, some of the sports we have here in Australia um, you want to go back and then you want to go back into very play again and there it is going back into very play and at any time you can repeat the process now another interesting thing let's just put this machine into freeze with these Q buttons um, you can see there's one been flashing the whole time um, that indicates that there's a Q point already uh, entered into there the way you enter a cue point, let me just put the machine into play. You just pick, the, pick any empty register or you can override if you want. And you push the button and hold it for half a second and take your finger off. The light will start flashing and that will indicate that there's a cue point there. At any time, if you want a cue to a cue point, you just hit the button once. And I'll just come out here. I hit the button once. And being a hyperdeck, it instantaneously cues up. Um, if I want to go to the second cue point, I can then hit the button and you'll see it'll automatically queue there ready to go because queues are always in store frames after that so there's one there's the other there's one there's the other and of course if I just go into fast forward um, I can do them on the fly just hold hold for half a second take your finger off I'll just do this randomly you get the idea of it is, that's three full. I'll go to number four. Finger off. It'll always enter the point when you take your finger off, not when you take your finger on. So you can always be on the ready. And take my finger off. So now at any time now I can just go to Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5. And there they all are flashing. Now you can you can delete a cue point simply by I'm going to try and do this one-handed. Just holding your finger on the shift button, pick whatever one you don't want. And you hit it once and it's no longer flashing. That's to stop you from accidentally queuing to something you didn't want. The um, um, at any time you can um, you can you know, use all the normal buttons. So they only just say queues ready to go. So I can just hit a button and it'll queue back to that point there. Um, now another interesting thing you can do if you hold your finger on the shift button and then hold your finger on the play button for over half a second it puts puts it into uh, let me do it right
Oh, I've got record lockout on. Um, um, anyhow, we won't worry about that for the moment. But what you what it do? It'll put the um, put the machine into record. Um, and um, while it's in record, you can still be setting your cue points. And um, and then at any time while it's in record, if you hit the Q button, it will um, uh, come out of record and um, go back to that Q point that you've selected. So you can be recording for um, instant replays and then uh, access them just with a push of a button. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, we have the ability using um, a Telnet connector. Oh, incidentally, that's the circuit board for um, the serial interface, uh, which I'll go into some other time. But using the Telnet connector, we can use this to uh, set um, inputs for the tape machines to auto-play. And what that means is that you can um, select an input uh, on, the, on the switcher where a tape machine is, enable auto-play, and then when you um, cut to it, not recommended, but if you wipe or dissolve or sting to it, it will automatically play the deck and you have a choice of either playing it in play mode or in still mode so that you um, you can use it for, sorry not still mode, in very play mode so you can use it for you're instantly um, starting off a slow-mo. Um, now the way that's done is that you just type in a special code. Um, I won't show you here because this video is going way too long and um, and then when you um, when you use it you can either cut to it um, or you can transition to it and it, and it will auto play. Um, yes, this video has gone way too long. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, email me if you want want to answer questions. I'll be here for you.